The animal kingdom is a wonder, a marvel, showcasing survival instincts vastly different from any seen in the human world. And yet, there is a cord that connects us all. And as ABC's Matt Gutman found, raising a baby gorilla is a lot like raising a child with a few hairy differences. In the world of zoo animal survival, she just peed on me. <laughs> this small moment is actually a triumph. Thanks, baby. You're going to leave me something to remember you by. Critical because just last month, Gladys's mother rejected her. She wouldn't bond with her baby, and there was a good chance that Gladys would not survive. So when Mother Nature failed Gladys, it was time for the human species to step in. So here we are at Gladys's baby sweet. Meet Ron Evans, curator of the Cincinnati Zoo, which thought it found a potential adoptive mother for Gladys, an endangered western lowland gorilla. But first, his team of 10 less hairy surrogate human mothers had to step into nurse, cradle, teach, and yes, mother this gorilla for three months before she's introduced to her surrogate gorilla hands. mother. They must transform she's themselves really into gorillas every day. And then let them bond up a little bit. The idea being oh. that the only way Gladys's new gorilla family will accept her is if humans can teach her how to become a gorilla. Paying careful attention to every detail, including a lot of faux fur. So you're very Conan the Barbarian in your. This is our this is our gorilla coat. It's very critical to this process because obviously little gorillas know to hold on to hair. You don't coo to baby gorillas. No, no. I talk to them like this. Like this. I always use a gorilla accent when I talk to Gladys. <laughs> And those vibrations are very soothing. And as Gorilla 101 continues, Evans instructs me to put on my own ape suit. That looks more like a sheep's suit. <laughs> are we training one. lambs here? Evans is so careful not to baby this baby. I groom her just like a gorilla. So, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I'm like... You're yanking the hair. I'm yanking the hair. I'm like putting my fingernails in her head. And the mothers do it. So huh. when she goes in with a mom, she's going to do it to her. And we don't want that to be the first time she ever experiences that. After a nap, Gladys wakes and gets curious. Are you creating that straw? And my surrogacy training kicks into high gear. I'm told I have to try to sound like a gorilla to help soothe Gladys. She's getting a little fussy, and you feel like she's getting a little nervous. It's always good to kind of pull her up yeah, against your chest and give her a little belch anyway. vocalization. How's that for belching vocalization? Perfect. So, uh, At two months, human babies are basically lumps of flesh. Gladys is freakishly strong and developed. Whoa, she's standing. She's, she's a genius. But she's an infant, and her routine is key. She eats, sleeps, plays for about an hour, gets tired, naps, sleeps, and then eats again. The way that they rest on you feels just like my baby did. Yeah. You know, they, they hold on to you, they grip, they sort of fit like a perfect football in there. But they're like, I mean, when she's awake and she sticks her hands on you on the back side of your arms, you'll know she's not a human right. baby. It's an exhausting cycle, but one in which Gladys has tripled her weight in just two months. This surrogacy is a system that has worked over a dozen times, says Evans. One of the reasons the population of over 750 gorillas in zoos is thriving. In the wild, the estimated population of 175,000 gorillas is declining. Surrogates like Ashley O'Connell are here round the clock. Most of them can't help but be smitten. Working on climbing. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago it was more she was pulling up with her arms, and now her arms are stronger, so she's pulling up more with her legs now. Most of her lessons are about grabbing and holding on to mama. And while Gladys seems part human, those eyes, the way she feels in your arm, her little squawks, and of course, the mess she makes, her 10 mamas want her to be all gorilla. So all of this, the stretching, the napping. Being a surrogate gorilla is the life, I tell you. The grabbing, the piggyback rides, precisely mimic the activity of real gorillas in the wild. She's very relaxed on you, Matt. Good. But there is a chance this elaborate experiment might not work. But as every parent learns, sometimes success means letting go. That's the day I think about all the time. That's when I'm, we're doing this stuff. I'm like, I can't wait to give her up. She's not our baby. She's not our pet. She's a gorilla. 
and we're going to do everything we can do to make her a gorilla. And that's going to be my happiest day, mm. the day she leaves us and goes in with a real gorilla. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Cincinnati.